I have received no declarations of interest, so we'll move on to our deputations by appointment regarding item five, this draft safer speed plan decision-making process. Um, to kick things off, um, we will, I'd like to first ask Fiona Bennett to come up. Now, Fiona's, everyone's got five minutes, but Fiona is talking uh, using up Simon Kingham's submission because he's unable to be here. So you have the luxury of 10 minutes, Fiona. Hello, can you hear me okay? Hmm. Uh, Maudie Nakota, I'm quite quiet, aren't I? Um, yeah. Kingham's a bit later because he's currently flying to Wellington, but hopefully he can answer questions uh, over the phone. So just speaking on behalf of myself right now, um, Maudie Nakota, and I am Fiona Bennett, so I live in Herewood, as you've all heard a million times. Um, please vote for option one, continue with the standard hearings process and with full council. I'm going to highlight six points. Number one, proceeding with the hearings, decision and implementation as soon as possible is in the best interest of residents as it aligns with the council's strategic priorities, policies and goals. Number two, the science behind slower speed limits has not changed. Any replacement rule may make it harder for road controlling authorities to implement the plans we have already consulted on, costing more money in the long run. Example, Implementing variable speed limit signs instead of permanent speed limit signs have a huge cost um, and having to reconsult or have ho and have wholesale changes will um, have a lot, huge cost as well. Number three, contrary to popular belief, speed limit reductions reduce vehicle emissions by smoothing out travel speeds as well as enabling people to feel safer walking, cycling, scooting and other forms of active transport. The sooner and more widespread the speed limits are reduced, the sooner drivers will start to adjust their driving behaviour, saving fuel and having transport options. Number four, consistency is key. That's why the whole city is drafted to eventually have reduced speed limits on local roads, rather than just some suburbs or just outside schools in Marae. If we don't proceed with the hearings and implementation, the variety and patchwork of slow speed neighbourhoods in the city will continue to confuse and irritate drivers, leading to low compliance. I witness this every day when cycling or catching the bus down roads like Colombo Street. Number five. The new government believes that faster travel, t travel speed times uh, will positively impact the economy, but I believe faster speeds will increase the number of crashes, deaths and serious injuries which will overall have a detrimental impact on the economy. Reminder that 4.10.3 in your agenda, RCAs retain the ability to target harm reduction through safety management, including speed management plans and infrastructure improvements. Number six. Some parts of the city, like where I live in, in the northwest or where my friends live in the northeast, have very little cycling infrastructure. While separated cycleways are ideal, and hopefully all corners of the city will equi have equitable access to cycleways in the future, safer speeds are a fast and effective way to make many streets safer for the interested but concerned cyclists right now. <laughs> Please vote for option one. Thank you, I'm happy to take questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, no, now, are you, oh, sorry, Tim? When you mentioned about um, faster speeds and injuries, we're not increasing any speeds over the norm. Just to clarify, we're, we're looking at slower speeds, so we're not actually increasing any, are we? No, but the new rule could reverse some of the changes that have already been made. Yeah, yeah. So just, yeah. Okay, so Fiona, I'm just a wee bit confused. Are you doing Simon's, or do you think he's going to probably be here on Zoom, perhaps? Um, well, he's scheduled for later, so I'm hoping to... to to do his bit then so that I can put him on the phone so he can answer questions because he's currently unable to answer questions. Okay, no, fair enough. Okay. So we've got any more um, questions for Fiona, please? Oh, thank you very much. And we'll see you later on. Okay. So now is David here, please? Thank you, David. Good to see you. Morena, uh, thank you for letting me be here. My name's David McCormick and I am a ratepayer of uh, Horsfall, um, just at the bottom of Kennedy's Bush. Um, so yeah, thank you for letting me be here to talk. Um, I'm here to ask you to continue or disagree with the council 
officer's report and saying um, go with option three, I believe it was, and I would like you to consider option one. Continue with the process that you have already done, the hard work, great work that council staff have already done to do with consultation, the work that you as elected members have already done with the previous consultation, um, and then also all of the hard work that ratepayers have done in giving feedback to the consultation. I ask for that because central government is currently asking us, or you as in local government, ratepayers to, or councils to stop continuing with the previously publicly engaged works, well, yeah, works to do with the setting of speed limits rule um, and wait until they come out with a new change. So yes, I ask for you to continue with the process that has already been completed and not wait for a rule change from the, the, the new government that has come in. As part of that rule change, uh, they're looking to not make it mandatory for local RCAs to have a speed management plan. A speed management plan provides strategic direction for speeds over the next 10 years, similarly to what you or councils have as a long-term plan or something like a regional land transport plan. It is just a strategic document that sets out the, the next 10 years. It doesn't specifically say, this is what we're going to do tomorrow. It just shows and provides strategic contact to council officers. Um, for me, slower speeds in the right areas, roads and everything, um, provides transport equity. That is a big one for me, um, that it is allowing people to have the choice between whether it's public transport, on by bicycle, by car, it just allows people to make choices instead of one option being a lot better than the others, which previously it's always been in motor vehicles. I'd like to yeah, continue with the great work that Council has been doing um, and continue with trying to increase transport equity that has been happening. If it is done right, which currently, in my thoughts, it has been done right, it is not going to actually increase travel times for car users. It's just going to allow them to choose to use other modes of transport. Um, to touch on one of the points just previously discussed, that yes, the new government is looking to have speeds increase the GDP, Whereas we all know that congestion at its worst is during peak times, which is the morning commute and the evening commute, where most of us are doing no work, not contributing to the GDP. So it's not actually done, with all the speeds then are not going to be impacted significantly. They are already slow, you're already stopped and not doing work unless you're on your phone. Um, I also like the idea of the slower speeds to allow that transport equity to continue with the CCC's um, emission targets that we have set out for being halved by 2030 as well as carbon zero by 2024. It also aligns with all the other council strategic policies, whether it be the, the CCC tree plan to try and increase the amount of trees or the Auto Tahi um, Christchurch Climate Reliant Resilience Strategy. All of those are good strategies that we are working towards making our home a better place and more climate resistant. Any questions? Yep, well, you've got one and a half minutes. Has anyone got any questions? No, thank you very much for your for your presentation. Thank and, you. And, and going to the trouble. Okay, uh, Bronte, please. <coughs> Welcome. Sorry. Morena, I am Bronte, I am a resident of Kashmir, and I am here this morning in front of the elected council and board members to discuss the future towards the safer speeds decision-making process. I personally encourage you to pause the said hearing until you have further guidance from the government that will be in turn in setting and amending rules relating to transport, which will be effective for the next three years at a minimum. Uh, the current transport, Minister of Transport has as we've noticed, but forward the intentions to replace the setting of speed limit rules 2022, which, funny enough, is why I'm here today, because for that to happen, there needs to be a hearing consideration before anything is passed and implemented. Therefore, with the said guidance you received from the past government and NZTA when drafting safer speeds, it is with general respect that you give the same attention to the current government and the rules they are to put forward. The transport program for the Christchurch City Council relies heavily not only on the city ratepayers for funding, but a key stakeholder for funding also comes from central government. 
And any changes of government policy that are then followed by the council could create the risk of changes in funding priorities. And in a time of financial struggles for some, and it is already in the eye of council, it comes, you know, I think the council should have the time to think and pause the decision-making process as, sorry, pardon me. Therefore, as the government is recommended, I also encourage you representing the City of Christchurch on the council to wait until the new government can consider any rules before making a final decision and taking your next step with this project. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank any you. For, yeah, thank you for making the uh, effort to come in. Any questions? First time here. Sarah, please. Yes, kia ora. Thank you for that. Um, the Minister's direction seems like it's going to be to make sure that we take into account the economic analysis at the same time as the community voices and road users' voices. Yes. So would you be in favour of us anticipating that direction? So we know that that's what the rule's going to be, and maybe at the same time as hearing from our community, which we've already got set up, actually get an economic analysis done now and not wait until the Minister's done it. So actually anticipating the Minister's direction. If we um, understand what that. they reckon and if it would, you're going on the aspect that they will pass it, then I understand going forward yeah. now and saving time. Yeah. However, yeah. if, like, for example, it might not be passed forward, then is it going to yeah. is it going to be worthwhile just waiting to see that it's definitely going But if forward. the minister's not going to do that, well, then we should just go ahead anyway, right? And have the hearing to discuss where yeah, it goes yeah. So go ahead with hearing, but maybe do the economic analysis as well. Yes, but you want to understand that you're not just jumping forward and... Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim, please. You, what, what if we went ahead with, and kept um, focus on the safe speeds around schools? Because as you know, in Kashmir, we've got um, issues with Beckenham, with Tennyson Street. We had to put the, the um, cushions in because people were not slowing down. St Martin's School was the same issue. Uh, Thorrington on St Taurus Road is appalling, even though it's a pedestrian crossing. Um, would you be okay? Would you think that that would be a logical thing to do to ensure the safest speeds around schools? Yes, I definitely believe schools are a priority. As a teacher myself, I yep. think it is vital that school zones are looked at first. Um, that is where your young children are. I also, I don't know if this is the place to say it, but I also recommend um, a blanket school speed signs. At the moment, it is so confusing driving in Kashmir. I have three mm. different signs coming off three different streets for the same high school. Yeah. I think, and if I go to a different part of the city, different signs, different times. I think a blanket school variable sign yeah. um, for school zones, I would encourage that. Strongly. And we are definitely looking at that because that is, yes, yeah, the, the priority is the safety for schools. Yeah, I have yeah. sent a different email for that, but you know, <laughs> I know it's not for this, yeah. but I would like clarity because. Oh. Well, I'm your counsellor, so blame me. Yeah, <laughs> okay, on it, Tim. No, yes, I encourage school zones to be set because... Right. Okay. Thank, you. Th thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, John, from Transportation Group New Zealand, please. Kia ora. I've come to uh, weigh in on the question of whether to pause or not. Um, as uh, the chair of Transportation Group and also as a resident of Cheviot Street in Spraden, right near Crusher South Intermediate School, and having heard the previous um, submitter, um, I share that sentiment, but do caution that um, children who are going to school don't just walk right in front of the school. They use streets all around, and they may, may make journeys up to a kilometer away or more. So um, the term blanket speed reductions is a political football. And it was one of the points of transportation group. So basically what we did is we have 1,200 members and we canvassed those members via internet poll um, and got the biggest response that, of any poll that we've ever run to the government policy statement, which includes reference to blanket speed limit reductions. We then um, interviewed five roading managers from councils in the Wellington region face-to-face and we convened meetings with Institute of Transport Engineers, local representatives in New Zealand, and prepared a joint submission, which I then presented in person to the minister. The topic of speed limits wasn't mentioned in the in-person meeting with the minister because I already know where he, where he stands on that. 
Um, but we did in our submission write that the term blanket is, is inaccurate. And using Chrysler South Intermediate as an example, it isn't blanket if it isn't every street. And the, what the, this council has done, I think, is the right thing in that major streets are still at 50. These are streets which with, have higher traffic volumes. They're wider. Um, they don't feel slow. But they may have schools on them. So that's where we have the time-based speed reductions. And it makes sense. It should, notwithstanding that you're going to have a lot more signs, it still does make more sense to have those major streets at 50K an hour. But what happens is, is that the media doesn't pick up on that distinction. And the, the political reality is, is that um, it's termed a blanket, even if it's not a blanket speed limit reduction. So it is as our submission, which I can make available to any of you, um, points out speed limit reductions are one of the, the quickest, cheapest things we can do to achieve road safety benefits. Um, so I encourage the council to continue with this and not wait for what we already know is going to come out from the government, which is the changes to the speed limit rule. So let's get them on the ground. People will get used to them. My colleague, Glenn Curry, has done an analysis of it in Christchurch, um, which we also referenced in our submission. And that shows how successful it has been uh, to simply change the signs, even if we don't get around to doing the other things. Uh, questions? OK. Tim, then Aaron. You talked about um, major streets. So are you saying in front of schools they should remain at 50 k's? Outside like of school hours. Outside of school hours, so just during, okay. Yep. Okay, okay. so Aaron, please. Yeah, who is Transportation Group New Zealand, John? Uh, so there are two main groups in New Zealand that represent transport engineers and planners, and that's Traffins, which uh, was formed 75 years ago, and Transportation Group, which was also formed roughly 75 years ago. Um, so the distinction is, is Traffins had its roots in local authorities, and Transportation Group had its roots in the consultancies um, that served those local authorities. The distinction is, is now kind of a little bit lost, but we do represent most of the transport planners and engineers in New Zealand. Planners and engineers? Planners and engineers, yes. Uh, when you say operators? Oh, when it's called Transportation Group, I thought you might have been representing like trucks and buses no, and no. that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, road design, Designers, road safety. not users. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the truckers. Thank you. Very clear. Thank you very much for your submission. Anything else? Uh, yeah. You've got 24 seconds. And it, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, just one of the things is around the economic analysis and are you aware of research that's being done on the economic costs or benefits of slower speeds in urban areas? I am, and in fact, that will stand up. So we're, we're okay with the, the ministers um, pointing out to um, speed limit reductions because if you do the economic analysis, it will stand up. Thank you very much. Okay, go. Is Shane here, please? Welcome. Morena, thank you for your time and attention today and throughout this entire contentious process. I'm cognizant of having two American accents together. I'm sure that's just a coincidence, but let you draw your own conclusions from that. That being said, in full disclosure, I am a member of the transportation group, but John and I have not done any coordination in this to this point. I speak as a rate paying resident of Beckenham as a driver, occasional passenger, runner, cyclist, dog walker, pram pusher and father of a four-year-old daughter and a four-month-old son. Based on all these interactions, I am very passionate about the need for road safety. I also have more than 22 years experience as a transport engineer, the last three plus in an RCA capacity. So I have more than a layman's understanding of the evidence considered in and the processes behind setting speed limits, not to mention the fraught conversations we've all been having over the last year plus. While I have the utmost respect for the council staff who signed off on the report before you today, I do have to disagree with the recommendation and strongly urge you to consider option one. 
This option would allow for continuation of the local consultation process, which underlies the safer speed plan to reach its necessary conclusion. Setting appropriate speed limits generally aligns with most of the strategic priorities for this council term, putting people at the center of development, reducing emissions, and balancing the needs of today's transport network users with future generations like my son and daughter. But making the safer speed plan consultation process, taking it through the hearings, does this as well, making the best use of ratepayers' money that's already been expended on the consultation, and building trust and confidence in council that when we are asked for our opinion as residents on how our streets should look and perform, you will listen to it instead of waiting for instructions from Wellington. Local councils have been vested with the obligation and the right to set speed limits going back to the original setting of speed limits rule 2003 and section 22AB of the Land Transport Act 1998. I quote, a road controlling authority may make any bylaw that it thinks fit for the safety of the public or the better preservation of any road, fixing the maximum speed of vehicles or specified classes of vehicles on that road. Community boards and council decide speed limits that are in the best interests of our local community. This is not and has historically been, not been blanket speed limit setting and it has not been overreach from Wellington. It also follows the principle that social and political issues are best dealt with at the most immediate local level rather than centralized decision making. I understand the minister has provided recommendations that council avoid any changes to speed limits until he can replace the current setting of speed limits rule. I note that previous updates to the rule have not been retroactive. That is, to my understanding, there has not been a requirement that existing speed limits be reevaluated. So there's not much chance of a rework out of any future instructions. By continuing our local hearing process, the council will ensure that the fair democratic process that it has begun is brought to a fair and reasonable conclusion. This does not predetermine any outcome for the hearing, and the hearing panel will also be able to consider the minister's view in the ultimate decision. This may or may not result in a change in the outcome for specific speed limits as you've been considering them, but that's not the primary issue today. Today we're talking whether council is able to keep faith with its community in terms of taking into account our views through a complete hearings process. There's no question that there's been a change in government and that a change in policy direction as a result coming from them. The voters determined this in November. However, changes in Wellington do not mean that the views and decisions that have always been made in Christchurch are now subservient to Wellington Ministries. I urge you to reconsider the recommendations in the report and give option one more consideration. Again, thank you for your time. Any questions? Tim. Yeah, thank you, me again. Um, have you noticed the behaviour in the Beckham, especially Birdwood Ave, with regards to the slow speeds there? Um, I've noticed a lot of commentary on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Um, because this is a role that, sorry, my role is very central to this, and I have a great appreciation for it. I drive the speed limit with the Beckham, and I find very, very few instances where people are aggressively struggling to deal behind me. So, and as well, just walking on the street with my daughter and son, I have noticed speed limits have dropped. And I think we know from the evidence on this, you drop the speed limits and you don't put police cars in every corner and you don't put traffic cameras out. Not everybody's gonna drive the speed limit, but the average speed drops considerably. And we're talking about the average speed and its impacts on, on crashes. But it also allows the police the power to issue tickets from that 40 or 30 k speed yes. rather than the 50 which they're doing 60 or 70 yeah cool thank you very much cheers okay thank you um sorry and we've run out of time yeah thank you thank you shane that was very good okay so we've got harrison m grace and jack we've got three yep from greater Otatahi. yeah there's actually only two of us today m had a um a uh, conflict of timing with another um, consultation. That is fine. Cool. Right. Kia ora everyone. So Morning. I'm Jack and this is Harrison. So we're here on behalf of Greater Autotahi. So we want to enable accessible conversation and non-partisan advocacy for uh, housing choice, modal choice, access to amenities, vibrant city centre and for today safe streets. So we just want to talk on how there's been a lengthy consultation process with round one and round two that's gone to the hearings panel with 1,300, uh, 1,300 individuals who have submitted 
and we believe that it would be in bad faith to go ahead and pause this now. Um, so uh, we're recommending option one as the intended option for council. Um, the quite interestingly, the um, and I assume you've all done your homework on this and read the read the report. If you um, look at option um, section six, um, six point one outlines clearly that the um, invested time and energy of the consultation process undertaken by residents um, is an important thing to consider in your uh, responsibility to engage with your community. And that is, for example, if the hearing panel was cancelled as per option three, um, it prevents significant risk to the confidence that the residents of the city may have in the decision-making ability of council. Um, we think that's a very important point to take under the belt today. Um, You'll hear from many about the, the benefits of safer speeds, and we don't dispute the science on that, the science is clear, but that the council and councillors by extension, um, we, we see you as representatives of the city, but democracy doesn't end at the ballot box, it ends, it largely ends here, and that by definition, anything brought to hearing panels as well is a form of active democracy rather than a form of passive democracy. And we think that's a great thing in this city. Um, we're also very wary that the, the letter received that's attached to this report indicates it's an intention of the minister to change the rule. It might be the minister's intent, um, but legally intention has no current say over the rule. The rule would have to be changed. And without a firm timeline on that, we don't believe it's really responsible to put the hearing panel off for possibly six to eight months while we wait for Wellington to decide on what they want. Um, it is, it is, I do appreciate it's a bit of a pickle to put yourselves in, but it's not one you haven't been in before, um, and you seem to have navigated that quite well so far. So we are really looking for council to take a degree of I, almost autonomy and a bit of leadership in this and say, we'll look at this and we want to hear the voices of the people of the city, and then if, say, we get to the point where the rule is changed and it's no longer in line at that point the decision can be made but it should be made with a full report in council's hands about what the residents of the city want rather than having a half done consultation process and so that's our that's our position on this really is that there is already a consultation process underway as jack said the previous round had 1300 submitters with over 2000 individual points requests and other um, amendments suggested from those submissions so it's clear that this is not a, a a quiet issue in the city and it's one that the residents clearly have a um an investment in in talking about um so that's our that's our point um questions tim again so <laughs> i'm just filling out the day um so if we went and followed option one and there was a very clear message, and as you pointed out, active democracy is when people come and take part in these hearings, and it's a very clear um, picture from the people of Christchurch that they actually don't support this, the slower speeds. You'll, you, you'd respect that, as we should? I think it should be absolutely taken into consideration. The voice of the people combined with the um, recommendations of your staff and the evidence around um, safer speeds should all be things that are taken into account in any final decision. So, so if it did come back that the people of the city didn't approve, we think that's absolutely something that should be taken into account. It's active democracy at that point. Thank you. Andre. Thank you. If there's a hearings panel and then the rules change, will we then probably need to do another hearings panel? Presumably residents will want to be able to have their say knowing what the rules are. It's a, it's a fair point. Um, I don't necessarily think so. The, the report is not binding on council to necessarily... It's a, it would be a... Um, from what I understand, it's just basically an, a, a grouping of thoughts and, and suggestions. And so it's not necessarily binding. And I would believe that um, any kind of rule coming from the government could be easily adapted to the needs of the city through that. It's just more about getting that information in front of you when that decision is made. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you very much for your presentation. Thank, thank you. you. I Simon was next, but I'll do John T now, if that's all right, and we'll just see how things are progressing. Is that all right, Fiona? Yes, Simon's available now. But 
Oh, sorry, is he? Okay, sorry, he, he was on the list. Sorry, Jonty. <laughs> I'll come back. <coughs> just, um, just call in and, and so, yes, imagine I'm a slightly older, slightly greyer, <laughs> Brit <laughs> British accent speaking. Men mental picture. Simon. Yep. <laughs> you've, you've all met Simon before. <laughs> um, Simon, can you hear us? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, uh, right. Um, hopefully you've received a link to Simon's uh, yes, speaking yes. notes, which have been sent through. Cool. So uh, he says, apologies for not being able to attend this meeting in person. As I am on the way to Wellington, he's currently on the bus, I believe, for meetings in his government role. I have a few points that support my conclusion that we should not pause the hearings panel process and should continue processing, progressing the safe speed plan, Christchurch's speed management plan. He has six points as well. Number one, the Minister of Transport has stated that he will reverse speed limit reductions where it is safe to do so. I cannot see a case where an urban speed limit of 50 kilometres an hour will ever be safer than 30 kilometres an hour based on the basic physics that a person has an approximately 90% chance of dying when hit by a vehicle travelling at 50 compared to a 10% chance of dying when travelling at 30. I can see why this could possibly mean could possibly apply on state highways, comparing, for example, 110 kilometres per hour to 100 kilometres per hour with, a, with median barrier separation, but not for 50 versus 30 speed limits. Number two, the Transport Minister has also stated that economic impacts, including travel times, and the views of road users and local communities are taken into account alongside safety, end quote. <coughs> CCC's Safe Speed Neighbourhoods works work has already demonstrated strong public support. Number three, time savings for 50 kilometres an hour versus 30 kilometres an hour are in, are in reality negligible in urban areas. Work by Auckland Transport identified that on average 14 to 19 minute journeys reduce speed limits around schools added on average 13 to 15 seconds. Number four, the Minister refers to blanket speed limit reductions. CCC is not pursuing a policy of blanket speed limits, rather lower speed limits in targeted quiet residential streets and near schools, etc. Number five, the Minister of Transport has identified that under his new setting of speed limits rule, the government would require road controlling authorities, such as CCC, to undertake cost benefit analysis. BCRs for, urban, for lower urban speed limits are likely to be significant. Data from Auckland shows BCRs of near 10 with more areas with lower speed limits. So this is likely to be an easy hurdle to get over. Number six, there is no clear indication when the new setting of speed limits rule will be implemented. How long do we wait for something that is unlikely to change what we are doing anyway? To conclude, Simon fully supports option one. Continue with the standard hearing, hearings panel process with full council. Let's not delay progressing a good policy that has wide local public support for a new policy that is likely to be consistent with Christchurch's approach to safer speeds and what Christchurch is already doing. Thank you, Simon. And Simon's available to take questions. Tim. Surprise. Mm -hmm. um, John from um, New Ze uh, Transport Group New Zealand mentioned with um, schools on major or main roads or, or more significant roads to having a time of um, slow speeds rather than a blanket of slow speeds. I'm just wondering what Simon's thoughts are on that. Did you hear that okay? I didn't like it. It was Tim, but I couldn't quite hear it. Can you just repeat it? Um, Simon, just with, re it. With, with, with regards to uh, what John brought up from um, Transport Group New Zealand, so if a school on a more main road or a major road to have a variable speed, so the morning and afternoon you have 30 k's for when the students are arriving or being dropped off, and then the rest of the day or after 4 o'clock or whatever that time may be, so prior to, say, 8 o'clock or 7.30 and after 4 o'clock, that, that road reverts back to 50 k's or whatever it is. Your thoughts on that, please? Yeah, I did hear that. Thanks, Tim. I think 
I think it assumes that people don't walk at other times, and of course people do walk at other times. So variable speed limits around schools, I understand the logic behind them. But of course, older people, other vulnerable communities, kids still want to walk at other times. We want kids walking safely on the streets. And the second thing about variable speed limits, of course, they're incredibly expensive to implement because you do need some sort of expensive signage, and it's much more straightforward just to have straightforward signage. So I think variable speed limits, I understand where the minister's coming from in his comments, but I think when you think through the logic and the practicalities, they're not a very sensible idea, really. Thank you, Simon. Cheers. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona and Simon. That, that worked very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Good on you. Okay. okay, so, John T, please, mate. How are you? Kia ora Council, uh, ko John Tio. I'm here with University of Canterbury's Climate Action Club and Extinction Rebellion and Climate Liberation Aotearoa. Like many others today, I'm asking that the members of the City Council vote to continue with the standard hearings panel process with full council. Now, I get it. On its surface, a safer speeds plan seems to present a simple trade-off, more efficient road networks versus safer active transport. But I want to dive into the wider benefits of supporting option one and continuing the safer speeds process. Now, I'm a long-haired youth representing a fistful of climate action groups. So obviously my first point is gonna be about the climate. A 2022 study showed that at inner city speeds of 30 kilometers per hour, emissions will be reduced. On its own, that's a pretty crucial piece of information to a council that's failing to meet its emissions targets. And as Simon said, it won't even shorten travel times. Now, a key part of safer speeds is actually in the name. It's safer. You've heard the stats. 90% chance of death at 50 kilometers per hour. 10% at 30. I don't know about you all, but I'd feel much safer knowing that I'm 80% less likely to die in a car crash at any given time. And I'm not alone. A recent Austrian study showed that lower speed limits encourage walking, biking, and bus use while simultaneously reducing congestion. I know empty buses cause certain councillors a bit of chagrin, so here's a way of fixing that. And of course, for each car off the road, commutes are that little bit faster for people who do drive. The sooner we implement the current plan, the more of these benefits we'll see. That's why option one is the best option for our planet. I understand that for some of you, planetary catastrophe resulting in billions of deaths and whole scale ecosystem collapse isn't exactly a motivating factor. So let's talk money. After only three years of reduced speed limit, Auckland saw an extra $10 million per year in benefits as congestion and crashes were reduced and people lived healthier, more active lifestyles. Furthermore, a recent review of 23 studies showed that improving safety and accessibility for bikes and pedestrians in a given area increases the financial success for nearby local businesses. Small business owners are key stakeholders in council decisions, with temporary works and changes putting them at risk. But this review shows that option one provides the most benefit to small businesses by getting the most positive outcome sooner. I'd like to point out though, where these savings are coming from. It's not just from less wear and tear on the roads. It's from healthier, happier people. Implementing the current safer speeds plan faster will empower people to be fitter and feel better in a wealthier city. I've already talked about crashes, so I'll use air pollution to illustrate this. A 2022 study found that the social cost of air pollution in New Zealand is $15.6 billion. If we scale down to Christchurch's population, that's still a billion dollars, enough to cover the long-term plan's first year of operational spending with room to spare. A University of Auckland researcher showed that children driven to school are exposed to 21% more harmful chemicals than those walking or biking. For each kid who gets safely, to, for each kid who gets to safely commute by foot or bike, that's one less asthmatic kid at the nurse's office. That's one less old person trapped in their apartment and that's one less family mourning the loss of a loved one right before Christmas. This is what you'll be supporting with option one, safer, happier people. With that in mind, what do the people of Christchurch have to say about safer speeds? From your feedback on the safe speed neighborhoods, of 2,000 submissions, 550 supported safer speeds or asked for even lower speeds. Only 270 opposed. That's a quarter of submitters supporting safer speeds, 13% against. 
I'd also like to remind you that you made a promise to halve emissions by 2030. You might remember school kids occupying council two weeks back. The 72 long-term plan submissions they hand wrote each and every one calling for you to keep that promise, your promise. I hope I've made it clear that option one is keeping this promise and safeguarding current and future generations from climate collapse. Now, the Minister for Transport may not care for safer speeds, but this isn't the beehive. The letter that prompted this decision isn't binding. In fact, it's a bizarre overstep in the separation of powers for a central government minister to demand that council complies with a rule that has not yet been written, especially when council is well supported with going ahead with its project. What we are discussing today isn't about Labour or National, Greens or ACT. This is about the people of Ototahi Christchurch, and the people want safer speeds as fast as possible. Safer speeds are an integral part of a healthy and sustainable cities. Supporting option one will better the environment, economy and health of our city, and it will show the people of Ototahi that you care about our voice. Kia ora. Thank you. Even, even though we, we run out of time, Andre had his hand up well early into the piece. So do you want to... Got a question, bud? Thank you. Uh, so pr presumably if we're doing a hearings panel, it would be after long-term plans, so maybe July, maybe mm. August. And my understanding is we're expecting to hear about the new rules by the end of the year. So if we were committing to a hearings panel by the end of the year, which would presumably fall around when we know the new rules so people can make an informed uh, submission to us via the hearings panel, wouldn't that potentially be the best of, best of all worlds here? But Because you're looking at it a couple of months difference and potentially a hearings panel based around rules which then change and then the... Uh, is there potentially a compromise to be found there that makes a lot of sense and I still suppose... delivers in a timely manner? I suppose my philosophy is the climate activist philosophy where we've got one or two years left total to save the planet. So when we're looking at it th through that time frame, two months is a significant amount of time. When we're talking about people dying, people's lives being on the line, I think two months is a reasonable amount of time but, to bring it forward. Presumably you want to see changes that stick, not changes yeah. that then have to be Absolutely. wrapped up later as well. So would... So doing a hearings panel knowing the rules would potentially help get rules that stick rather than having to be reversed, I guess is... is yeah, I understand. If you had to choose between doing it sooner or you know having rules that stick, it's a total hypothetical, I know, but... Doing yeah, I understand, and unfortunately I'm no expert in local government at this point. Um, so yeah, I've kind of said my piece. Um, Understood. But yeah, I appreciate yeah. that point. Thank cool. you. Thank you. thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd just like to thank everyone for their deputations and the time you took doing it. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll go on to the uh, item five, the staff reports, and...